um, this is my first homemade Christmas card and I just thought I would give you a quick um, kind of show and tell and um, I'm filming it outside because the sunlight is a lot better out here. Sorry about all the background noise. And in case you're interested in making this, um, I'll do a tutorial after this section of the video. But I don't know if you can see, it's a shaker card with the snow mica flakes on the inside. Here it is again inside my house under a special daylight uh, light that I got for making jewelry. Um, sorry, my son's in the background asking me questions. I didn't know if you could see the mica flakes inside. I just really love this card. I saw it in a um, scrapbook store. And then um, it's pretty big. And then on the inside, I got this free stamp uh, from a scrapbook order. And that's just what I did. And I'm going to be giving these to just a few select people that were very helpful to me this year that I really wanted to show my appreciation to. So anyways, um, thanks for watching. And uh, stay tuned in case you want to see how I made it. So the first thing that you're going to need is this stamp from Stupendous and it's called Magical Snowman and I really liked it because it had a very, very um, vintage feel to it. I just thought it was too adorable and um, I think this was like $6.99 for the cling stamp. Sorry about the glare. And I'm, I'm just going to double check to make sure that name is right. Okay, this is what it looks like. Um, I stamped it onto Gina K. Uh, pure luxury cardstock in white. And that's what it looks like. I used VersaFine ink to stamp it onto the paper. Then I used these um, Pebbles pearlescent chalks in the pastel range. And they're really cool because they sparkle if you look real close. And they're um, pretty blendable and they have tone on tone colors. And the way I applied my colors was through um, what looked like makeup brushes, but I actually got it in scrapbook aisle. And they're just called chalk applicators from Inka Dinka Do. Here's the packaging in case you wanted to see that. And then you also need um, a kneadable eraser. I really didn't know what these were. I had never gone to art school. But um, you can find these in uh, Michael's. And you literally just tear off a piece, roll it up into a ball, and then you can use that to literally erase any chalk that you didn't want to have. If you want to change the color, if you went outside the lines, for whatever reason, it's very handy, very easy to use. You can mold it into any shape. And here's what my snowman looks like after I finished um, coloring it. And um, the colors I picked were based on the model I saw in the store, but also because these are also my Christmas colors. I use a lot of pastel colors when I decorate at home. And you can kind of see it matched um, also the cardstock. And the way I chose the colors um, was I put the stamp on top of the pink cardstock, which was going to be the frame. And then I just made a bunch of um, practice marks in the corner. And, and then until I thought, okay, those colors seem to blend well with my papers. And then I did, did a trial snowman and I made a few adjustments and this is what I ended up with. For the frame I used, I got it from the um, Happy Hauntings Cricut cartridge, and um, that is on page 68 of the booklet. And um, it was for their beautiful, beautiful frame. Um, so I'm going to show you the cutout and the sizes. So here's my practice frame, and as you can see, um, let's see, maybe that's better if I do that. I cut it out at five and a half inches on the Cricut. And then, in order for my snowman to fit inside this frame, I um, cut my snowman down to four and a quarter inches wide by four and three quarter inches tall. And um, that's the size that you end up with here. The next thing you need are these screen prints, and I learned about these from Allie Edwards. Uh, sorry, website. She did a really cute tutorial on a Halloween mini album and I saw her use these and I really fell in love. So here's a, a full page um, of the screen print from Hamley Studios um, that Ally Edwards uses a lot in her albums. And this was called um, Frosty Snowflakes and they're kind of expensive but you don't need that much. Um, 
So um, I'll give you the dimensions for that in a second. When you do this, there's a couple of things to keep in mind. Just make sure if you want the textured side to be on the outside to tape it down um, on the back, what would be the back side. And it's easy to not remember that because the color is the same. So I already made a boo-boo. Um, and the other thing is um, this screen print has a, I don't want to say a right side and a wrong side, but the painted side is, um, I'm making that my outside. And then this has, um, this is just plain plastic or whatever it's made out of this template material, um, acetate or whatever. So I wanted the side with the paint, there's a little bit of texture there going on the outside. So it's kind of counterintuitive, but you actually put the tape on the edges of the outside and then you tape it in that way. And, um, okay, so hold on and what this this next part is somewhat unique. I don't know if you guys have seen this, so this is almost like the best tip of the whole video. So, of course, when you're making a shaker card, you need some space between um, the frame and the base of the card. And um, so the way I did it, I used foam tape, but it's much thicker than the regular foam tape. And I it took me hours to figure out um, and I never did. I finally went to a scrapboard, scrapbook store and at random I found this. It's um, pretty thick and you can even double that um, but compare that thickness to the thickness of the stuff that we buy in Joann's. Do you see the difference? And um, this is um, the most important information the brand it's from Kaiser Scrapbook and it's called Foam Tape. Now it's supposed to be self-adhesive, but the stick is not that great, I have to tell you. And so make sure that you press this down. See how the stick, it's, it's not even sticking to itself? If you want, you can add extra tape. Um, but you have to make sure this is secured down really well. Otherwise, um, the mica flakes that you put in um, are going to just come falling out of the card. Some people might get irritated with that, some people might not care. But um, So again, I'm going to show you the side here um, of this card. And you can see that's where the foam is right there. So you can put two strips of it or one strip of it, it's up to you. But it's somewhat expensive and um, you need quite a bit for for one card. Like um, This is all I have left and I've already done three cards. So. Um, anyways, uh, my first card I did two strips, but I realized I was going through it so fast, so I decided just to do one strip, and I was happy with that. So I'm going to put my strip on, and then I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, here it look, here's what it looks like once you have that foam tape on. And the key is to make sure that there's no gap between the pieces, because the mica flakes could come out through, um, through the gap as well. Okay, so now I'm going to take you to the next step. Okay, so the next thing you want to do is mount your snowman onto um, your 6x12 card base. And the paper I used is called Basic Glitter Paper, and it's from a company called Best Creations, Inc. Um, and on the inside, it is double-sided, but on the inside it's just baby blue. And on the outside it has these cute, sparkly, white dots that look like uh, falling snow to me. So I thought that was really cute. Okay, so the next thing you want to do is put your mica flakes right in the middle of the card and about that much. If it's too much, you can't see the image at all. If it's too little, you can't tell they're there. So um, you want most of it to settle on the bottom of the card, um, but if people shake it, um, it'll look like a snow globe and it'll spread all over the card. So I don't know of any other brands. I just bought this brand here um, from Melissa Francis. and. This was $6.29, and you get a bag um, that's that big, and you only need a little bit, so it goes a long way, so you can make a lot of cards with that. And then i got to stop the camera so I'm, um, I can do the next step, but I'll show you what I'm going to do. So now is the time when you want to take this strip off this double-sided foam tape, and what you're going to do is put it over here and set it down and secure it to the base of the card. And the, re the reason why you want the snowflakes in there is obviously because if you put it there and you flip it over, um, they're going to fall off. And the other thing is 
The reason why you want it in the center is because um, if it gets on the tape, then the tape won't be sticky and then the glitter will fall out of the card. So let me do that and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, now we've got the frame on the card and you can see the glitter in there. And then if you just shake it around, kind of, there's extra snow in addition to the snow on the um, acetate, the snow inside the card is really fun and cute. Um, so, but it still looks a little plain. So I ended up, I wanted to put a bow on mine, so I'm going to do that next. So now I've added my bow, and on the inside I've stamped my stamp. And this stamp um, is a Studio G stamp. I think they come in the Michael Dollar bins, but I actually got this as a gift um, and it, uh, from Simon Says Stamped uh, with an order that I placed with them. And it came with these little gems, so you could kind of make it look like Rudolph and give him a little red nose. And I was a little bit worried about these stamps. I didn't think they'd come out all right, but um, it, it came out. It came out pretty good. Um, this cardstock, um, the ink sort of maybe I over inked it. It really it saturated and bled a little bit. Um, so you might want to um, ink your stamp on um, something else and then put it in here. I'm just basically too lazy. I've already put so much effort into the card, and I didn't want to get overly fancy on the inside. I just... So that's the end of my tutorial. Thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment and um, I'd love to uh, be able to answer any questions you might have.